Right, this is a short video. We're going to explain the key parts of the TU-16 turf winch and how to safely operate it. As before, with any piece of equipment, make sure we carry out a full visual inspection before we get to operate. And that is the same with the turf winch and it's all its ancillary equipment. The unit must never be used for any operations outside of what is described in the technical document. And again, the unit must never be used to handle any loads exceeding the maximum working limit, again, indicated on the unit or in the technical document. So the turf machine is hand-operated, as we all know. Um, and it's, it's for lifting and pulling. Those are the two main functions of the turf. -er. The pull is applied by the means of two pairs of self-actuating jaws, which are encased in the unit itself. And they exert a grip on the rope. So think about it as a hand over hand pull of a piece of rope. Every time you're pulling it, the other one is resetting. The machine is supplied with a telescopic handle. We have a 20 meter standard length wire rope and we have the turfy unit itself. Basic in its operation, there's not many key parts on here, but we'll go over them very basically now when we do the operating side of it again in a minute. Okay, so we have the wire rope guide here at the end here. So this is where the wire rope will enter. We have the carry handle and support handle. And then we have the two movement levers. Okay, so we have the one on top, which is the reverse lever. And I just tilt forward a little bit. And then we have the forward lever down the back here at the bottom. So reverse on top. And then we have the forward one down the back. We have the rope release lever here, and then you have the safety cats for the rope release here as well. So these two work in conjunction with each other, and we'll show you the operation of that a little later in the video. The last little key selling part of the turf itself is the uh, hook. Okay, this is for securing your anchor nice and quickly, and we've got the safety pin here, so it's spring loaded, um, nice and easy to operate. So we allow it to put the uh, strop on there nice and easy and quickly. Okay, so we can quickly go over the um, working the rope release lever and the safety catch that comes with it. Okay, so each machine is fitted with the rope release lever for releasing the jaw mechanisms internally to the turf or winch. I've got to reiterate, we can only operate this lever when the machine is not under load. Okay, so if the machine's under load, we do not touch this lever at all. There are two positions for the rope release lever. So we've got released and engaged, okay? So at the moment, it is engaged, okay? So what we're thinking about is actually the jaws, not the springs, because actually it's counterintuitive when you're actually playing with it. So it's the jaws that we're talking about. Okay, so to release it, we're looking to bring the lever up to the top position, okay? And the safety catch is where we are working with, okay? So engage the safety catch. As soon as that's down, we can exert some pressure Support yourself with the handle and bring it up. You can hear the little click in. Just make sure that it's actually loaded into place. And now we're in the released position. Again, it's spring loaded. So you're thinking it doesn't feel like it's released because we're activating the springs. But what we are, have done, we've released the jaws within the mechanism. So that allows us now to load the wire rope into the turf or winch itself. Um, so for engaging so releasing the springs but we're engaging the jaw mechanism again safety catch again so exert a little bit of pressure onto the onto the lever safety catch in and what we're not asking you to do now is let go of this hand okay so it's spring loaded it's just going to cause damage we lower it down under control and allow it to lock into place again check that it's locked into place and that's the main operation of this lever. So all we're doing is engaging the jaw, uh, jaws or disengaging the jaws, okay? It's not nothing to do with the spring loaded on the actual mechanism itself. Right, so we're gonna go through very quickly and talk about the shear pins in the turf winch. Okay, so all turf machines incorporate a shear pin system. So in case of overload, one or more of the three pins, so there's one, two, three here, 
um, which are fitted in the forward operating lever, they will shear and prevent further forward or lifting operations. So you won't be able to utilize this lever at all. The reverse lever will still work. So this is an, will enable us to lower the load or slacken off the wire cable. So this one won't work, the reverse will still work. So the location of the shear pins, as we've already said, there's one, two, three in the stub of the forward operating lever. And these are the shear pins here, and this is what they look like. Where are they located? So the spare ones will be located in the stub here. There's a little plastic cap at the top here. Flick this out, and they are one, two, three, or a couple of more will be uh, located into the handle there. Just put that back in. So how do we operate? So we, when they shear, we remove the shear pins uh, with a suitable punch, okay? And then we're looking to remove the forward operating handle stub in its entirety, okay? By any sort of an extractor, okay? So just remove this whole stub once these have been punched out. Clean the recess, okay? So have a look around here. Just clean it all up. And then we're looking to refit the pins. So refit the, the stub back onto its crank lining up the grooves and those shear pins just tap them in lightly and then what we're trying to do afterwards is drive them in and you're going to do that with a little hammer okay so you're going to drive them in with a hammer and that's all your shear pins relocated and the stub back on okay so let's talk about the installation and setup of the turf winch before we start and we make sure that we've got our gloves on as recommended when we're handling any of the wire rope and the mechanism we uncoil the wire rope to make sure that it's nice and straight lying to prevent any loops or kinks and then we're going to go back to the rope release lever again so we'll need to disengage the jaws inside so that we can insert the wire rope remember how we do it so safety catch in support yourself with the handle bring it up and now what we've done is opened up the jaws inside the actual turf winch. So we can now insert the wire rope through the, the rope guide. And if we come across any stoppages inside, all we're gonna do is move the handles and hopefully we should be able to push the wire rope all the way through, okay, until the other side. Once we're happy, uh, we've got enough wire rope through we then disengage or release the lever. Again, we're not asking you to put the pin down and let it drop. We can do it under control measure, measure. Okay, make sure it engages by hearing that little click. And now we're ready to operate. At this point, we'd look to secure the turf winch to its anchor, which we'll show you in another part. But I'm gonna show you the operation. So we've got the telescopic handle now. So bring it all the way up until we find the little pin. Okay, make sure that goes in. There it goes. And now we've got the, again, remember the reversing is on the top and the forward motion is on the bottom lever. Put the lever on top. And now we can operate the surfer winch. So we've got the forward here, back and forth, is how it's going to work. Okay, we're going to show you this on the more of a wide shot anyway on the full operation. So that's the forward. If you need to use the reverse, take the lever back off, insert it on the reverse lever, and it naturally picks up the opposite direction. One of the key things we have to remember is a big no-no. We cannot operate the forward and the reverse at the same time. So do not exert pressure on the forward handle if you're using the reverse and the same on the opposite way around, please. Okay, so that will mess up the mechanisms inside. Right, we're gonna talk about anchoring. I'm gonna talk about it nice and briefly. We're gonna go over the key salient points that we're looking for when you're setting up the turfer winch. Failure to anchor the turfer machine correctly runs the risk of serious accident. The user must always ensure before operation that the anchor points are sufficient strength to hold the load that you're looking to pull. It's recommended that the turf and machines be anchored to the fixed point so we can utilize the hook of the turfer and we can go straight into the fixed point utilizing the hook. 
Preferably, however, we are looking to utilize a, a sling between the turf of body itself and the anchor point. This allows greater movement for the wire rope to come in and out of the body of the turfer nice and straight and there's not an immediate turn to the left or the to the right. There's two ways that the turfer can be actually anchored. Okay, so it can be anchored as it is in this arrangement. So the turfer is actually attached to the fixed point or the anchor at one end. And you've got the wire rope going to your load or what the subject that you want to pull. Alternatively, you can have the wire rope snap hook at this end attached to the anchor and the turfer body itself can be attached to the load you're looking to pull and we can move towards the anchor. Whatever rigging arrangement, and if the machine is anchored directly to the fixed point, ensure that there are no obstructions between the sling, the turfer, and your wire rope, and that we're operating it in a nice straight line at all times. Okay, so we've quickly switched it around just to demonstrate the alternative way of fixing the turfer winch. So this way we have the rope cable with a snap hook attached to an anchor in the distance. The turfer body itself is up the other end and this is attached to the load that you're trying to move. I do a simple operation. As you can see, the turfer and the load is going towards the anchor. So the turfer, you have to move with it. Okay, this is not the preferred method. And I think the routine method would always have the turfer winch secured to the anchor itself, moving the load towards the turfer. However, there might be some examples uh, in your operational world that you might have to move the turfer winch to the load itself. Um, we haven't got a full setup at the moment. So this is not under tension. This is purely for demonstration for this side of it. Okay, so we're now outside and we're going to go through the full setup of the system. We've done the individual parts inside, so you should be all familiar with the setup and the operation of the turf winch itself. We just want to demonstrate the full picture for you now. So we're utilizing the appliance as an anchor, suitably sufficient to pull a small van that we've got at the opposite end. We're operating with the turf winch secured to the anchor end. We've talked about the options of securing the turf winch with the load, but we're going to secure it in the preferred option at the anchor end. Again, preferably, we're going to utilize a strop, which we have done. We've gone from the eye bolt here out to the turf winch, and that's now secured in. Okay, always as a safety, make sure that we are checking that the pin is all correctly stowed and uh, stored, so it's not going to come out. By utilizing the strop as well, remember we can work in a better straight line with the turf winch and the wire rope has free movement and it's not going to get caught, which really, really, really helps us out. Moving forward, the turf winch is all ready to go. It's under tension. So we've got to make sure we always remember we're not talking and made, uh, sorry, talking, playing with the rope release lever here whilst under tension. We always leave this one alone. Moving down. Okay, so we look at the PPE side now of what we've got. So make sure we always got our gloves on when operating, helmet on, full, full PPE, and now we're looking at your double eye protection as well, okay? Making sure that we are protected at all times. As anybody working in the vicinity. Moving down the wire rope now. Apologies for today, it's a really, really windy day for us. So what we've done, we put a sandwich sheet over the top with cones just to stop it blowing away. Now, good firecraft, uh, a sandwich sheet over the top of the wire rope. If it does at any point of time, shear, break, what we're going to get is a whip of that wire rope. By putting that sandwich sheet over the top, that just takes out that um, snap, should I say, or the whip, and hopefully it will put the wire rope to the ground very, very quickly. It also acts as a great visual aid for us, so no one's going to turn around and trip over the wire rope when it's blended in with the concrete, as you can see. Further down the wire rope, okay, so we've got the snap hook at the other end. Um, secured, again, we're utilizing the strop which is attached conveniently to our pull bar at the bottom here of the van that we're trying to pull. Okay, so strop again gives us great movement here attached to the snap hook. A couple of things we need to remember when utilizing the, the turf or winch. Okay, so we cannot utilize this for lifting people, not that we would, but it's a big no-no. Um, 
Make sure that we're working in line at all times. Keep all obstructions clear and free. Good commands as well. Make sure we don't operate the, the reverse and the forward lever at the same time. And don't obstruct these levers at any point of time. Um, just one word of note, not that we would be looking to, but the turf or winch cannot be utilised uh, in an explosive environment. Okay, So make sure we're not utilising it in, in any environments like that. So we're going to hand over to Jim now and we'll do the, uh, the operation of the turf or winch and we'll move the van back down. Okay, so finally, once we've got our load to the point of safety and we're happy to where it is, we've still got the cable under tension. So Jim's now taking the uh, telescopic handle off the forward lever and now placing it on the reverse lever and going to take the slack out of the cable before we can release the rope release lever. Okay, so once we've got a suitable and sufficient amount of slack in the, in the system, we're happy to release the lever and pull the wire rope out. 